Hello, good evening, welcome. It's Sunday the 16th of November 2014 and it's, well they're laughing at me because I'm not sure if it's 9 o'clock or not. It's it's more complicated than that because there's a bit of a upload and download turnaround time. But they're laughing at me, they're laughing at me. I've got no Dave Dawn tonight, but I've got Sav and Chris helping me out and that's a pretty good job by the looks of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one. Sav's just confessed. Um, you're watching Vapor Trails TV. There we go, the titles work this week. Had to remake them, or change slightly. I wonder if any of the observant people noticed which bit had changed. So, software, software. Right, tonight on Dave's Tackle Box, I am going to be taking a look at this thing. And this is the Silo Light Tank, as it says on the box, uh, from Beyond Vape. And that's it there. Just hold it there till it focuses. Focus. There we go. And uh, this arrived a few days ago. I'll be telling you what I've learned about that thing. We've got a bit of VT. Dave. Dave Dawn. Dave Dawn. He may very well be in Ireland, having attended Vape Fest Ireland, I think, yesterday, but making a weekend of it with his missus. And, uh, and funnily enough, staying in a hotel, which is kind of opposite the school I used to go to when I lived in Dublin. How's that, eh? So isn't it a small world? Um, but he's not around. But as I say, Chris and Sav are sort of, uh, they've got my back. It's a good job, really. Because <laughs> I was messing up the ads and everything just before we uh, came on air, but they've sorted me out, so that's good. Um, I'm also, uh, time permitting, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Dave, Dave, he's not here, but I've got a VT from him. And unfortunately, uh, I haven't got a guest tonight because we had a late cancellation and then I wasn't around. And then we had somebody who offered to come on, uh, but it was too late. So so basically, you're just going to have to lump it and put up with me and my thoughts about uh, Dave's VT, which is about OEM e -cigs, you know. Um, and so, so it's a sort of about the rebranding of, of e -cigs and stuff because it's a bit, bit of a pain, I think, especially for new vapors who don't know the way round. Um, and uh, I won't preempt too much, you'll see about that. And then a bit later in the show, time permitting, uh, I'm going to take a look at a story that hit the BBC during the week uh, about uh, the fire service uh, asking for uh, some warnings to be put on e-cig kits and chargers. Uh, I want to have a look at that in some detail, and and because uh, somebody irked me on Twitter, a public health person irked me somewhat. So I thought we'd have a little look into that and just see, you know, you know, is there really a problem with these things? Um, but we'll just uh, we'll just uh, play a little sting in here, and uh, and I think we'll start by looking at the silo light tank. Yeah, that seems like a good place to start. Now, I should also point out that I have got the early stages of man flu. 
so I'll try not to sneeze or snort or go <laughs> too close to the mic. Um, and I will, of course, be taking medicine as I go along. Um, but I want to I want to talk about this this silo light tank, right? So it's here on my what has become already my trusty little eye stick. One of them because I got two, you know. <laughs> um, and um, it arrived the other day, and I've been using this quite a bit. I got it on. It arrived yesterday. That's right. It arrived in yesterday's post, Saturday. Today's Sunday, isn't it? That's yesterday. Uh, it feels like I've had it longer. But basically, I'd never heard of this thing. Because with me being away all week and being basically quite busy at the moment, I um, I miss a lot of the e-cig news these days as it goes past. But I happen to be, I happen to spot a post from Toby at iVapor on the UK Vapors forum. And he'd mentioned, he it, it basically put a picture of it, right? And I think he'd even got a picture of it on an eye stick and I thought it looked good. And uh, I think it does look good. It fits, it doesn't overhang the edge. It's about as big a tank as you can get without actually hanging over the edge of the thing. Um, so I like that idea. And um, he'd also, he put a comment in the, the, this post on UK Vapors, and I'm, I'm sure he put it on other forums too. This was just happened to be the one that I saw. And he said uh, that although it comes with the Aspire BDC, the bottom dual coil uh, heads in it, that it was a very good with the BVCs, the, uh, the bottom vertical coils. Now, if you were watching this show a few weeks ago, you might recall that I'd ordered quite a few of these BVC cart uh, cartomizers duh uh, these BVC heads by accident because I thought they were BDCs and I didn't read it properly um, but I've been using them because I had one of these K1 cartos uh, that uh, SaferSig sent along to me uh, you might recall this thing here and I was using it very happily on the eye stick because it was just working really, really, really nicely. Problem is, I was a bit reluctant to take this through airport security. And I'll, I'll show, I, this could be an irrational fear. Um, I just think, let me show you what I have been using. Yeah, and you can see there's an Ego adapter on the bottom of this. Um, I have been using these Aspire BDC cartos um and the reason i like them is there's just a little window it's not too blatant what's going on there and i was a little bit reluctant to chance my arm because they might have made me put that in a sealed plastic bag because it's quite clearly liquid i mean okay if they really wanted to scrutinize at airport security they might they might have me for that as well, but they never have. And I've been using these for a while. And before that, I was using EVODs. And, and I've never been told that's a liquid, put it in the bag. But I just don't want to push my luck. Um, when, when I started... If I can change the camera. There we go. When I started sort of flying for my job regularly again, which was about... It was the beginning of 2011, wasn't it? It was just after VTTV started. What's that? It's three years, three and a half, getting on for four years, I suppose. Um, and e-cigs were quite a rare thing. So while I would get off, often asked, what is that at airport security? I don't think anybody was clued up enough to be thinking, oh, that'll have e-liquid in it. And there's limits on liquids, and they should be in a plastic bag. I always put my little juice bottle, which I've showed you before, one of these in a little see-through sealable bag, and push that through. And I've been asked, actually, coincidentally, I think, I've been asked a couple of times recently, what's that? And I just say, oh, it's for my e-cig. And they just go, oh, fine. But I've just got a feeling that cartomizer might attract, that K1 thing might attract a bit of interest. So when I saw uh, the, Toby's ad for the... Um, his post should I say for the uh, the silo light tank and saw the picture on the eye stick I thought that's not bad because I flick back to it now and you can see it's kind of got a lot less 
a lot less of the liquid on show if you like there's just the two little sort of uh, visibility windows on it and so i'm going to i'm going to take this one tomorrow and the, the reason for that is i put the bdc's onto the eye stick and i found it difficult to get a nice balance between any flavor and the throat hit i actually think the bdc was working better on my 650 milliamp hour ego battery then I can get it to work on the eye stick, and uh, and to be honest, if I turn the 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 the, the wattage right down, sort of something below eight watts on the eye stick, then I was getting something similar. But you're losing what? Why would you? Because you're losing the stealthy sort of aspect of it. It's much more difficult to palm this and everything. But I come home, I put the K1 tank on, the the cartomizer on. And it's a much nicer vape than a BDC on an Ego. Am I making sense? So I basically saw that and thought, I'm going to give it a try. So I ordered it sometime during the week. Uh, actually, it was Thursday. I think I ordered it from the airport. It rolled up on Saturday morning, thankfully. Otherwise, we'd be talking about something else now. Um, it's made by Beyond Vape. And I think in Toby's post, uh, it's... He said it came from the US. Um, it is indeed supplied with um, a BDC bottom dual coil and a spire one. I quite like the packaging, actually. So you sort of open it like that. And you pull that out. And the tank obviously was in there. And it came with... Uh, a BDC that was in it, which I took out straight away, because I'm starting to become a BVC fan, I've decided. There's a spare BDC head, which no doubt I'll use in something eventually. Um, as well as the drip tip that's on there at the moment, which is a really wide drip tip. You've got one that's off the other extreme, if I can get it out. Look at that, a tiny little hole. So uh, I looked at that and thought, oh, that's a good idea. Because I've got, like, the Kafen light has a small hole like that and a couple of other things I've got, and I quite liked it. But I thought, I'll try the one that's fitted to it first. And I haven't even taken it out yet, to be honest. That's the first time it's been removed. And as you can see, I've obviously been enjoying it because I haven't changed it. So it's quite good. Uh, so that's what you get. Uh, there's a little instruction booklet showing you how it fits together and uh, it tells you how to fill it and being a, a bottom coil kind of thing you uh, you fill it just like anything else that takes those things. I'll show you in a minute. I've only just noticed this. There you go, it says the narrow drip tip, tight draw for better flavour or an airy draw for more vapour. Well, maybe we'll try that in a minute. See if there's any difference. Um, one of the things that I like about it as compared to using the K1 or the BDC Cartos on there is that it doesn't have an ego fitting. It does have quite a deep uh, centre pin. However, it fits lovely and flush on there. It just just fits just right. It, um, I think a few people have noticed with these eye sticks, it's quite easy to depress that centre pin a bit. I've had to have a screwdriver in there a couple of times using these Ego adapters. I think it's pushing them down a bit. Um, so I've had no such issues with this. Ignore uh, this. If you've seen my Facebook or Twitter feed recently, you'll realise I've got a kitten. So <laughs> hence all the little scratches on my hand. <laughs> Um, you fill it in the usual way you take the base off look there's your coil and you put your liquid down the side not down the middle or it'll all just come out through the drip tip and that'd be bad um, it says in the little instruction thing don't fill it above the level of the window so when you've got it upside down you fill it so I've been filling it just past there actually just so I can see that there's juice in there and I filled it up not that long before the show, but it already could do the top up, perhaps. So, so 
so it's pretty standard for anybody that's used any of these bottom coil arrangements they're all much of a muchness i think as i say you screw that down just finger tight until it stops turning and that hasn't been depressing the uh, center post in the uh, 510 fitting at all it just works um i've been just using it at nine watts which might sound a little bit wuzzy and i'm sure for a lot of people it is this is 27 ish milligram juice that i mix myself but i'm finding i'm getting a cracking balance of vapor production throat it and flavor um i'm i'm liking this quite a lot let me uh just check one thing that i'm not sure of i'm not actually sure what the capacity of the tank is it doesn't seem to say on the packaging but my guess would be a few mil i haven't measured it but i would guess that it's a few mil just having a look no it doesn't say anywhere but uh yeah so i'll show you it working you'll hear it you see there's plenty of vapor there i know this camera never shows up the vapor particularly well but i think even allowing for that you can see there's plenty of it and the flavor is just excellent now the head's only been on there since yesterday so what it'll be like after a few days i don't know but the, the initial signs are very good I, I i like it a lot i think it was 20 quid i did have the delivery note but i've been having a tidy up so i've probably binned it just leaves that um almost coating of flavor in your mouth which not all cartomizers do those bdc certainly don't and the bvc heads in the bdc carto don't taste anywhere near as good as this and they don't produce as much vapor as this either now like i say i hadn't noticed this when i opened it yesterday this little piece of paper and this is basically saying I'm using the airy draw mouthpiece, but I'm going to call it a drip tip because it's what it is, uh, for more vapour. But if I want more flavour, they've spelt flavour wrong, so it's definitely American. Then you're supposed to use this one with the narrow tip. Just uh, get them on camera again. You see, that's the one I've been using. This one should give me more flavour, it reckons. Let's see. Looks good too, doesn't it? Do you think? It's uh, with the BDC Carto on it, I was getting away with it on the plane. Uh, not quite as easy. And blue, perhaps, was a bad colour. I might get a black one. I swear there was more vapour with that one. <laughs> I'll be honest, guys. I can't tell much difference. And I, I think I prefer the wide one. If anything. Just feels nicer. But the flavour's pretty much the same. Yeah, I like it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I may well pick up another one of those. I'm pretty sure it was twenty quid. Nineteen ninety-five. Just looking for the delivery note. But I've had like a mega sort out in this room. I t <laughs> I'll share some of this with you, right? I um, I used to have off, just off camera. Um, Remember, if you've been watching my reviews and VTTV for a long, long time, you remember I used to have a couple of guitars hung on the wall. And I, they had to go, basically. They were hung in the bedroom for a while. And then they were just, like, wherever I could find to put them for a while. Because I put a cupboard there. It was like a shelf unit. It had four shelves on it. And two of those three shelves were just absolutely full of juice and rubbish. I've thrown out of this room 
two black bin liners full of EC gear. Dodgy looking chargers, which will become relevant later. And uh, and e-cigs, you know, things like uh, I found things that were perfectly good e-cigs, but they're no good to anybody because I've like raided the kits over the years and most of them juice had leaked in them and everything. They weren't really very good for for giving away or anything like that. Certainly weren't saleable. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I was ruthless and I've, I've got rid of so much vaping gear. Uh, it makes me hurt, but I have actually got space now and the point of this little tirade is I'm just going to lift this camera up because I'd just like to demonstrate that I've got the guitars back on the wall including my new one oh, hey. see how neat and tidy my room is now it's getting there isn't it so, there you go behind the scenes at VTTV so uh, there you go I'm going to drop this camera in a second so I better stop <laughs> So, a lot of e-cigs and a lot of old rotten manky juice had to die so I could throw that out. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at chat to see if that got any response, but I don't care. I've shown off my guitars anyway. And um, we are at the time of the first ad break, and when we come back, we'll have to, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, sort of... Uh, partly through Dave Dawn's VT and partly through my thoughts about OEM e-cigs and rebranding of stuff. So I'll be back straight after these. UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. Vapors, do you love discovering new e liquids? Tell Dripper the types of flavours you like and they'll send you five gourmet juices each month. Experience new and exclusive flavours, all with a money-back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe. Dripper.co.uk RY4 Radio Welcome back. Now, before we uh, look at that VT from Dave Dawn, uh, I just <laughs> I just uh, was watching some of the uh, conversation in chat there, and um, we talk. There was a lot of talk about vaping at one hundred and eighty watts and stuff, and because 
and liking a warm vape. Now, I've got to be honest, I really couldn't give a monkeys about the temperature. I know there's a talk at the moment about temperature control of vapour and stuff like that. and I couldn't give a monkeys myself. It's, uh, as somebody else in chat also said, hey, each to their own. I'm not saying no, but for me, nah. He said, I'm really, really happy with this. You know, I've got some, what you would call high-end gear there and everything, but I'm really happy with this. And, uh... I'm getting back into last week's grumpy old fart vapour thing again, aren't I? Um, now, I want to talk about this OEM stuff. And, and this actually is an example of uh, of the point that, they're, that, that both Dave uh, and myself are going to make, actually. But uh, I'll show you the VT first, and, uh, and then we'll come back and reflect on it a bit. So see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Brake lights everywhere you look. Driving around in a car, it does give me time to think. And when you're in a traffic jam, as I am at the minute, it gives you even more time to think. And I was just, just so you know, I'd been into the Apple store. And I know, I know, Dave Dawn's an Apple fanboy, yes. I get that, fine. I wasn't. I am now. And there's a good reason why I am. Cutting a long story short, my iMac was poorly, and it's the iMac that I've used for quite a while to put the shows out on. The hard disk died. Now I've had it since 2011, so it's over three year old. Took it back in to the Apple store, they did their quick check just to confirm that what I'd said was the case was the case. And the upshot of it is, it's being rectified for free and for nothing. This is three years down the road. And the Apple Store's putting it right, for free and for nothing. There was obviously something wrong, wasn't my fault, so it's getting done. So I'm an Apple fanboy. And it led me to thinking about people that are fanboys, if you like, for certain of the branded e-cigs. Some people, for instance, are Joytech fanboys, some are Kanga fanboys, and so on and so on and so forth. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be. If any of these outfits produces something that you really like, I don't have a problem with people buying into a particular brand, but I tell you what I do have a bit of a challenge with. And that's all this OEMing. Now I'm not going to name any names, but there's one particular e cig that was brought to my, well, battery that was brought to my attention a little while back. And somebody said, oh, Google this particular name Tesla Spider, and you'll find it. And I did. That's its original name, the Tesla Spider. Can't remember who makes it. But I've seen it OEM'd and branded other things by vendors. Going back in the day when I first got started, I well remember watching um, a sequence of four reviews from, I think he was called Rusty Nuts. Scottish lad, he's not active anymore in, in YouTube reviews where he looked at a 901 um, and the device was identical from four different vendors but each different vendor had called it a different name and had their own branding on it so 
it was exactly the same. They were all Silobore 901s, bearing in mind that at this time, the only people that made a 901 was Silobore. It very quickly got cloned, but these were all exactly the same unit in exactly the same box. Just called different things. It was the same with the 401. It was the same with the 510. All exactly the same unit, but all called different things. And I think that kind of thing just serves to confuse people. One of the reasons I use Apple equipment as much as I do, and one of the reasons that I'll continue to use Apple equipment is because it's made by Apple. And I can spot a clone a million miles away. And if it ain't the real I am, I'm probably not going to use it. And yeah, yeah, I know there'll be people saying, well, you're stupid because they cost the bomb. Yeah, you'll notice we don't get that many issues in terms of being able to broadcast. And what issues we do get are usually down to the carriers that we use rather than the machinery that we use. And it's kind of a, it's a funny thing, isn't it? And it probably will bring me on to the next piece that I do, which is gonna be about clones. So let's leave that one there. Let's kind of say, look, I'm not keen on the same thing being called a million names in different places. I would really rather, if you are selling a Joytech Ego, for God's sake, call it a Joytech Ego and not a E6 R Us Ego or a Rocket or a I don't know what you want to call it, lipstick or anything like that. If it's a brand, call it a brand. This OEM thing just serves to confuse and it doesn't help when it comes to cloning, but that is a subject for the next time. Thank you very much. Let's try that again with sound. It's a good job I had muted the sound though, otherwise you'd have just got this really horrendous echo. So, you know, actually that was a good thing. Um, I just want watching chat there as, as that, that video was playing out and there seems to be a lot of agreement with what Dave was saying there about OEM. Just before I touch on that though, uh, I just want to pick up on a comment. Somebody saying uh, the temperature control, which I was banging on about just before that. Uh, obviously, yes, I'm aware that the idea of temperature control is to control the temperature of the coil. Yeah, yeah. So, but, 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 you need to control the temperature of the coil because we're using increasingly lower ohmages to get warmer vapour and clouds, yeah? So it's kind of my point stands really, but yeah, I do, you know, yeah, I stand corrected in my choice of words. That's for sure. So, uh, but I do agree. Yeah. Anyway, back on to OEM. Um, the yes, other equip original equipment ma 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 manufacturer, original equipment manufacturer, because that came up in chat as well. Uh, it used to mean something slightly different. OEM. If anybody that's been using PCs for for 20 years or so, OEM. I'm sure it used to mean something else. Um, so it's other external manufacturer or something like that, yeah. Um, and, and but the, the, the point that Dave's making there uh, and, and the point that I agree with strongly is, um, the reason for my agreement really is it's so bloody confusing. I, I started vaping just over four years ago, just over four years ago, and um, and egos were just becoming popular and i'd bought like a little uh cigar like thing i told this story so many times you all know it better than me now but basically i used it for a week or so uh, realized some of the, the the 
the shortcomings with it went on to a forum and uh sort of some of the first advice actually got, i got from, was from dave dawn uh and he advised me towards a thing uh he was saying go for an ego style battery and i I'd never been so confused in my life. Basically, I let a bunch of strangers on a forum <laughs> pick what I needed. And I actually went for a thing which wasn't uh, a rebranded ego. It was called a Reva. It was made by a company called Esmail. But I very quickly sort of latched on to the fact that you had egos. You had Janty egos. And Janty, obviously, were the designers of the ego. So, so you know, that they... they Joytech were manufacturing them for Janty, but also selling them separately. And then on top of that, uh, one of the uh, there were a handful of eSig vendors on the internet at that time. You know, if you Googled for, you know, sort of uh, that kind of thing, a totally wicked would would normally come up top. Uh, you would Google and find Scott Bonner's videos with the totally wicked um, uh, 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 discount code and what have you on there. Um, so uh, if if you were new to the scene as I was, you know, Totally Wicked were up there and they were calling it a tornado. And, you know, I had to go and get help to find out that actually they were all the same damn thing, right? <laughs> you could buy Joytech Egos, Janty Egos uh, and the tornado and they were exactly the same thing, but all at a spread of prices. Uh Totally Wicked were, were, had pitched their, their Tornado Ego, uh, probably the highest price. The Joytech ones were, uh, you know, usually the cheapest. Uh, iVapor were selling the Janty branded Ego, uh, and they were they didn't call it the Ego, did they? I can't remember if they did or they didn't, actually. But the Janty branded one was somewhere between the two, and in actual fact it was all the same damn thing. <laughs> so it was very confusing and it continues it continues to this very day this very eye stick um, is now uh, the. I understand the exclusive rights to sell this in the UK are with Totally Wicked this is obviously eLeaf which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Joytech so it's Joytech for the sake of our conversation everybody knows it as the eye stick but Totally Wicked are selling it as the curve now, I'm not an idiot, right? And I certainly don't think that Totally Wicked need marketing advice from me. Let's face it. They know what they're doing. They're a very successful company. Um, but they, they've decided to market it as the curve. I can't help thinking that because these have been around a little while, a lot of people will Google for iStick and the curve won't come up on their search results. I don't know. Or maybe it will through forum and people saying, hey, that curve, it's an iStick. I don't know. I'm sure they've thought that through because they're much better at marketing than I am. But it seems unnecessary. It seems totally unnecessary to me. It's confusing. Dave used the example of the Tesla. Uh, we had, uh, I had uh, the thing, do you remember the E-Mini and the E-Roll? Avali and Joytex branding for the little uh, sort of singer like rechargeable thing in the PCC. That was different. Uh, it seems to be a lot with the Joytex stuff, doesn't it? Uh, but I'm sure it goes on with everything else as well. Yeah, so um, I'm just looking at chat there. Uh, somebody mentioning the uh, the Reva was closer to Banzai, as in they were badly regulated or unregulated. <laughs> um, they the the thing with the uh, the Ismail Reva was that it was. I wasn't the fact everything was marketed as a 3.7 volt battery with the ego wasn't it and but in actual fact you were only getting 3.4 or something was it from the joytech ones but the reva was giving you a full 3.7 or something it was regulated uh, and it was you know they were perfectly good to be honest with you so i don't remember the banzi to be honest with you banzai banzi I remember Beyoncé. I threw one of them away earlier. The eye mist. Remember that? Yeah. So there you go. Um, I see the question there is TW cheaper. Um, uh, for the if you mean the curve slash eye stick, 
Uh, they seem to be quite similar to the other UK dealers. I think I paid 30 quid for mine, and that was just for the eye stick. And I think Totally Wicked is charging 40, but you get the charging cable and the Ego adapter and a bottle of juice, I think, 10 ml of juice or something. So, so they're, they're, they're very, very similar. So, yeah, and somebody's just confirmed that. But that's 40 quid for like the full kit. So it's, it's, all, it's all quite similar. So, anyway, uh, it's actually time for our second ad break. So I'll be back straight after this. Bay, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquids. Proud sponsors of Vaping Entertainment on Vapor Trails TV. And welcome back. <laughs> right, uh, chat talking about Reavers. Yeah, the Reavers that I had were, um, I think they were 900 milliamp hours from memory. I was just having a quick look in the tackle box there. And they very well may have been amongst the casualties that got binned over the last couple of days. I actually thought, oh no, hang on. There we go. There's one. There's one. This is, uh, that doesn't look big enough to be a 900 milliamp hour. Maybe I got that wrong. But there you go. That's the first Ego type battery I had. And as you can see, it is Ego threaded. It is a 510. There was, and there you go. It still works. And that's been lying in the tackle box there for some years. Uh, basically, that never got used again after I bought a screwdriver. And then a couple of weeks after that, I went to Vape Fest UK and uh, within a few months of that I had a lot, a lot of mods. So uh, that is still working. Um, and I'm not shocked by that. I must have thrown out 50 or 60 of this kind of battery today. Like there was some from um, Rock. Do you remember? Was it the Legend? Um there was uh, the vape stick. Anything that was new and presentable and unused, I've kept, and I shall give them away to people who are thinking of trying an e-cig. Um, you know, that's fine. But I, I quite often get, or I used to, not so much now, but I used to get sent kits to review and things like that, and they always came with two batteries. And uh, 
So basically, you've, you've raid everything out of the kit, <laughs> use it, review it. And then uh, if it's this kind of thing, you know, even if it's good kit, you know, it's not the sort of stuff you use if you've got a lot of mods at your disposal, is it? So they end up just festering there, getting covered in juice and all the rest of it. They're not good for anything. So um, I must get more organised with that kind of thing. But of all of those batteries that I've thrown out today, and as you can see, I've only cleared out some areas of the room. That I've still got, I've still probably got 50 of these left, this kind of thing, I would imagine. Um, they don't die, do they? I think you can see it on that camera there. He's still working just fine. I bet you I could put this K1 cartomizer on this. And this is over four years old, this battery. And it won't have been charged for three years. And as you can see, it works just fine. Uh, point I was going to make is they don't die, do they? They don't die. What happens is something new comes out that looks better. Now, if you're like sort of reasonably organised people and not as tight as a gnat's chuff like, like me, you might throw these out when you get that new kit, but not me. I, I, I let it build up until it becomes a major health hazard. <laughs> and then have to re be ruthless and fill bin liners and stuff like that. But uh, yes, oh, wow, look. Of course, there were no cartos or anything like that when I got this. I think uh, the the uh, cotton-filled Bose type cartos, but not Bogue or Bose. And I never did learn out how to pronounce that properly. Um, they were just atomizers, and I had a choice basically a nine oh one or a five ten, and I was advised to go with the five ten because that seemed to be catching on. There's the cone look, and my five ten would have stuck out the top there. So there you go. So, uh, people talking about original Liberty Flights 901 PCC. So I've still got some of those sort of stuff as well. I, c I could, couldn't I? I could go through this box one day. Just invite a bunch of old vapours to come and watch me. Yeah, look, this is how bad I am, look. Remember that E-Lights kit that I'm always bitching about? <laughs> okay, it isn't in there, but the charger is. Anyway, I digress. That could be a show all in its own right, couldn't it? Looking at old crap vaping gear. And I came across a fair amount of that. It seemed quite good at the time. It was quite good at the time. But anyway, right. Uh, I do tonight want to talk about uh, something that cropped up in the news during the week. And like I say, I mean, uh, I miss a lot of the news. But... Uh, I think I think I first saw it. Somebody tweeted it. I think uh, Cat uh, or Sav or one of the VTTB guys put it up on the VTTB Facebook page as well. Um, but let me uh, see if I can get this up on screen. There we go. Yes, still got audio as well. This appeared on the fifteenth. Uh, that's yesterday, um, and it's. It's a bit the BBC, obviously, and the headline is Call for E-Cigarette Safety Warnings. It says safety measures should be displayed on electronic cigarette kits, fire bosses have said, following a rise in incidents linked to the devices. Figures obtained through the Freedom of Information requests show e-cigarettes or related equipment, including chargers, were involved in more than 100 fires in less than two years. The local government association said more cases could be going unreported. Uh, a local government spokesman said the numbers were a major cause for concern. Uh, the, the article then goes on to pull out some of the stories that, 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 that we, we, we've spoken about um, on uh, VTTV at the time. Um, there's a little video here and I'll let it run. Uh, there you go. If they release vapour rather than smoke, they're promoted as cleaner than traditional cigarettes. Some believe they're a useful step on the way to giving up smoking altogether. Because they're electronic, they need to be charged just like a mobile phone, and that's where the problem lies. An e-cigarette was on charge in this pub in Yorkshire when it simply blew up. Now e-cigarettes are being blamed for the death of a man in Wallasey. In Wallasey. The body of the 62-year-old man was found in a bedroom at his home. 
Fire investigators believe an e-cigarette had exploded while it was on charge, tearing into a pipe from an oxygen machine the man relied on to help him breathe. Electronic cigarettes are increasingly popular with sales rising by 30% every year and the fire service in Merseyside has now been called to nine incidents involving e-cigarettes. Hiya, from the fire service. The fire service is now including warnings about e-cigarettes on community visits. Just make sure that when you're charging them, it's during the day. Don't leave e-cigarettes charging overnight. Buy them from a re reputable um, retailer. Always use the charger plug that comes with it and check that it's got a CE mark on it as well. That's the safety mark? It is, yes. Yeah. Manufacturers are calling for a sense of proportion. It's really important that people do use the supplied charger and follow the instructions. Batteries on charge should never be left unattended. There is always a risk of fires. But as the Fire Brigade Union has been very keen to point out, this pales into insignificance compared to the number of fires caused by tobacco cigarettes. This isn't really an electronic cigarette problem. It's a battery and charger problem. This is the damage done at a house in Hampshire when a faulty charger was used for an e-cigarette. The Merseyside Fire Service is urging smokers to take note. Right, so uh, apologies for sort of doing that on the fly. Um, if I just get the right camera up now, there we go. Uh, you know, I, I actually thought that little video bit actually was quite balanced because they had the fire brigade guy and obviously they had Kath there. We all know Kath from Isita. Um But they had the fire brigade guy there and he was saying, no, no, look, no, no what you've got to do about this is... He distinctly didn't say they should be removed from the market or they're a menace or anything like that. The tips he gave were buy from a reputable dealer. That makes sense. Um, and then always make sure that you use the, the, the charger that came with the kit that you bought. Now, some of us don't buy kits and some of us uh, charge uh, sort of loose batteries and you know, 18650s and all the rest of it. And I would imagine that most of the people certainly watching this live tonight will be fully aware that you don't just pick up one of these, yeah, sort of 510 charger and screw your battery into it without checking first, you know. Um, we, we know to check the milliamp hour rating and uh, on, on on these and whether whether it's the right one um now i'm, I'm going to make a bit of a confession because i showed you that e-lights kit earlier uh I, I bought a spare battery for that the kit came with one and i bought one and after i'd been uh after i got the reaver i um i did exactly what i've just said don't do because i didn't know any better and and this is kind of the point i'm making i took that that e-lights kit uh, has uh, it's a 306 it's a 510 thread okay and I had a 510 charger which came with the reaver and I put the e-lights thing in and I plugged it into the little USB uh, powered USB hub that I use for charging all my sort of uh, ego 510 threaded stuff in fact anything that takes uh, that charges off a USB cable that's what I use these days and uh, and I noticed that it was melting. It didn't explode, but the end of the e-light cigarette started to melt. And so I learned my lesson fairly quickly and fairly safely without any damage done except to a battery, which I think I was only charging for a VTTV show anyway, to be honest. Um, but, uh, you know, just just really, we got to, just want to reiterate the point, that point there, you know, um, that the issue here is, uh, you know, with the guy with the oxygen tank and all the rest, absolutely tragic, you know, absolutely tragic. And it's a mistake that I could have made because I didn't know. OK, uh, now I do. But um, it, it's down to charging, isn't it? It's not down to, uh, you know, some inherent flaw with e-cigs. It's down to people buying cheap shit off the market. <laughs> OK, and, uh, and and that's not to say that all, all stuff on the market is cheap shit, but the, the, if you go and buy a £1.99 bloody USB war wart, as Dave Dawn calls them, yeah, and charge your e-cig off it overnight while you're not watching and the damn thing starts heating up and explodes, then I'm afraid, you know, you've only got yourself to blame. I'm all for messages being printed on these kits. 
absolutely all for it and i've got to be honest with you most things that i buy whether they're laptops mobiles whatever you get these days they do seem to have those kind of warnings printed on them these days anyway i think it's when you go outside of the reputable market that that that, that the bunch of these issues start to find in actual fact i tend to use if if, if i'm not using my powered usb hub there uh i tend to use um uh sort of really highly rated ego chargers these days uh through um through uh, an apple plug because i've had so many iphones and bits and bobs i've got spare ones around these days and they're great you know just just the 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 the, the phone one not the, the 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 higher powered um ones that used to come with the ipad and what have you and and i've never really had an issue apart from that dumb time when i put the the little stick battery in there so, you know, uh, my advice, go and invest in some decent kit for your charging. You know, don't try and skimp on a few quid because, you know, cheap electronics that have, they might have CE printed on them, but we all know that the Chinese think that stands for Chinese export. <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah, a bit of common sense. So, and, and I think, and you know, I, I, I think the BBC piece, okay, the, you know, Sure, they've been a bit sensationalist about it, but they're trying to make a story, but at least they got some balance in there. You know, and there's some pretty sort of graphic pictures here as well now that you can see of melted charges and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, not as, as, as an advocate for e-cigarettes that's trying to tell, you know, trying to convince people in public health that these things are safe. You don't want to see headlines like that. But at the same time, you know, somebody reads that and thinks, oh, Christ, yeah, I better check my charger out of that, then it's a good thing. But what irked me? Because that didn't irk me. That's 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 a fact. That 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 stuff's happening. And you know, uh, what really annoyed me was some people blowing it out of all proportion. So I'm going to show you a tweet now um, from a guy called Gabriel Scally. Now I've got to be honest. I didn't know who this guy was, so I googled him. And to be honest with you, he hasn't got much of a track record. But he used to be a public health official uh, and was responsible for the southwest of England, Bristol area or something. He's now got some uh, advisory role. Uh, I think I think it was Bristol University. I don't know. I don't want to publicise the guy anyway, to be honest with you. But um, he has in the past, I found... Um, you can see, actually, from the tabs on my browser, uh, he hasn't got a Wikipedia page. <laughs> uh, I saw that Dick Puddlecoaters uh, mentioned him in the past. And it seems he's a bit of a Martin McKee supporter, or at least. Uh, this, this goes back to March of this year. He does seem to acknowledge Martin McKee as uh, a, he is a key public health expert re e-cigarettes. So, you know, I mean, I'm just establishing this guy's uh, bona fides, yeah? You know, <laughs> he thinks McKee's an expert on e-cigs, then that kind of puts it in perspective for you. But yes, um, he made this tweet. Uh, the comment is that it's ironic that e-cigarettes designed to replace burning tobacco should themselves cause house fires. And... I mean, I reacted to that tweet. I replied, and I could see Dave Dawn and a, a bunch of people who are probably watching this now also had a go. I think Dave blocked him, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a, you know, all the usual suspects, myself included there. I actually thought I'd won an American football jersey part way through this, but don't be distracted by that. <laughs> um, I mean, my point, my reply to that tweet was that I thought it was sensationalist and disingenuous. Uh, the issues reported in that BBC piece were all to, down to incompatible charges, you know, uh, and that's no different to laptops, mobile phones, etc. Um, if, if you just pick up some random charger right in your right hand and a, a lithium battery powered device it doesn't matter whether it's a camera or your phone or a laptop and use that charger just because it happens to fit that's a practice you want to get out of okay um something else that, that may be of interest uh if i can find it now um I think it's on my Facebook page, actually. Yeah, here it is. Uh, one of the replies to that that comment there, 
and this was actually posted by Rob C on Twitter, uh, just to make sure I credit it. But uh, <laughs> somebody called Orbskewer, and I don't know who Orbskewer is. Let's uh, let's get that up. Um, this was uh, in reply to that, and I apologise for the aspect ratio of that picture. Uh, I may be able to tweak that slightly. Um, no. No, we're stuck with that. Um, the What that basically is, it's a table uh, for 2011 and 12. So admittedly, it's uh, you know a little bit behind the period that the BBC was claiming to report on. But this is actually showing that, uh, you know, smoking materials um, were related, uh, were responsible for 2,673 fire incidents out of 37,000 total in 2011 and 12, um, re resulting in 84 fatalities out of a total of 244 um, and 125 non-fatal, oh, sorry, 781 non-fatal out of 7,729. Um, the two significant things about those figures, uh, one is that uh, Eatings aren't mentioned on there because presumably they don't rate it. I presume they're part of the other category. But of the 37,601 total incidents reported, 19,612 were related to cooking appliances. So, uh, you know, uh, I, d I did like the way that Orb Skewer here has uh, basically uh, posted this tweet under the heading of Action Against Cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, I, I like that one i like that one but but you know just to put that that give that to, so it's a twenty thousand out of thirty seven thousand we're down to cooking appliances and i don't see any campaign to ban cooking appliances so i mean gabriel scully right you know whatever your intentions whatever your agenda shame on you for trying to cash in and trying to make some capital out of that you know it, it's it's wrong it's not wrong and now that i'm afraid brings us to the end of tonight's show hasn't that flown by you know i was actually worried that i could stretch that out actually for an hour tonight i've got stuff in reserve there i didn't have to touch um i just want to say thanks ever so much uh for watching tonight um and uh i'll be back again next week until then thanks for watching bye